Hello everyone, my name is Sayed. Today in this class, we are going to discuss about introducing to dial peers. Okay. So first we'll discuss what exactly this dial peers, why we require dial peers and how many types of dial peers we have. And already we have discussed about this. If you remember, we have configured uh, analog phones, right? We have uh, assigned the extension on that one. We have already discussed this one. Okay, I'm going to repeat again this one. Okay, after that one, we have another concept of inbound and outbound dial peers. What exactly? That's very important. Okay, we'll discuss that one. What exactly? That inbound and outbound dial peers here. This one. Okay, when a call is placed at an edge device, generate a dial digit as way of signaling where the call should terminate. When this digit enters a route voice port, the router must decide whether the call can be routed and where the call can be sent the router does this searching a list of dial peers a dial peer is an addressable call endpoint means what is this dial peer and another we have dial peer defines how in which path the call has to be routed yes this is an interview question and sometimes in an interview they'll ask about what is a dial peer so dial peer defines via which path call has to be routed. for an example so we have the call manager and the IP phones. So this is my COCM. Then the IP phones are registered here. These are the IP phones, which is registered under this call manager. Then we have the gateway, voice gateway. And this gateway is connected to one end PSTN. The another end, it's connected to ITSP. Okay. When I'm dialing the number, what happened? Okay. The call comes to the call manager from the IP phone. Then again, from the call manager, it goes to the yeah, gateway. From the gateway, now the gateway has to be decided what type of number is this, whether the call has to be routed via PSTN or the call has to be routed via ITSP. That is what dial peer defines this one. Dial peer defines the call, okay, which defines how or which path the call is routing, where the PSTN is the call is routing or the ITSP is the call is routing. That is the one. Another thing, the dial peer is an addressable call endpoint. For an example, we have the analog phone. Okay. This analog phone I have connected on the router. So we use the FXS interface, right? For the exchange station here. Now, when you have connected this analog phone on this FXS interface, if you want to be assigned the extension to this one, again, we can be assigned that extension or configure that extension by using the dial peer. Okay, that is what the definition here. Actually, what happened whenever if the call is coming to the router from any end, either if the call is coming from the call manager or the PSTN or ITSP, what happened this one? So it's going to be processed here, this one, from where I'm getting the call and where it has to be transferred, okay? How it has to be transferred, that one and everything, that's a completely defined by the dial peers. Got it? So in an interview, if they ask, you can answer these two questions. Or at least the last bullet point you can be answered. Dial peer defines how in which path call has to be routed. Again, you have to give the example. For an example, if I am dialing the number from my IP phone, the call comes to the call manager. From the call manager, it, it forward to the gateway. Now in a gateway, we have the two providers. One PST and one ITSP, we have this one. So here, now whether the call has to be wrote via PSTN or the call has to be wrote via yeah. ITSP. So that is defined by the yeah. dial peers. Got it? Okay. The next, we have different types of dial peers. Okay. There are five different types of dial peers we have. One is the POTS. POTS stand for plain old telephone yeah. system. Means whenever... If you want to create a dial peer or always if the call is routing via PSTN, if the call is routing via PSTN, it's a POTS dial peer you have to create. Just you remember, if the call is routing from your gateway to the PSTN or from the PSTN to your router, if the call is coming, it's a POTS dial peer. Okay. That means any analog interface or digital interface, we have to configure which dial peer? Ports dial peer. Why? Because from the gateway to PSTN, either we can go with unlock connection or digital connection. Unlock connection, FXS comes. Digital connection, T1, E1, PRI connection comes. Okay. So that's, we have to configure ports dial peer. Got it. Next is the VoIP dial peer. Voice over IP. So when we use the voice over IP, if the your traffic is routing over the IP address, 
Okay. Example, from my gateway to ITSP, it's IP-based communication. See, from the gateway to PSTN, we don't have the IP address. Okay. Unlock connection we have. If you have unlock connection FXO, we use the signaling loop start or ground start. If you are using a digital signal, uh, sorry, digital connection T1E1 or ISDN PRI T1E1, that one, where we have what happened? Layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, we have this one. Okay, CAS and CCS, that's a signaling method, that one. Because ISDN works in a three-layer architecture. So we don't have the IP address here. We are not configuring, assigning, and the traffic is not routing based on the IP address. But coming to ITSP here, so the communication happened from the customer gateway to the ITSP based on the IP address. Both the end it will communicate IP to IP communication. If the traffic is routing over the IP, if your call is routing, then we have to be create a VoIP dial peer. See, now in this scenario, what happened here, I have to create a VoIP dial peer. Between your gateway to ITSP also, I have to create VoIP dial peer. Okay. Between the call manager to CUCM also, I have to create a VoIP dial peer. Why? Because again, from the gateway to CUCM, we are using IP address. Yeah. How the gateway can communicate to CUCM? Through IP address. Yeah. How CUCM can communicate to the gateway? Yeah. Through IP address, this one. So always between the call manager to gateway, VoIP dial peer, gateway to ITSP, VoIP dial peer, gateway to PSTN, source dial peer. This is, you have to understand. It's very simple. Right? Next, we have the other like uh, Vivo FR, voice over frame relay, or Vivo ATM, voice over ATM. Earlier, what happened this one, uh, these are the old technologies. Nowadays, we are not using any technology. For example, you have multiple locations. Okay. Now, from one location to another location, you want to communicate. Okay. Yes, we have internet. Via internet, we are communicating. But internet is not secure. Internet is not secure. secure. Why? Because in an internet, we have the attackers. For an example, I have taken the internet connection. Some other company also taken the internet connection. There is another user, his name is attacker. Okay. So that guy also has taken the internet connection. Now, internet is not going to filter the traffic. So who is good guy? Who is bad guy? So that's the reason. So it's going to provide the internet for everyone. Now we are not aware who is good, who is bad in the net, internet, in the public network. So that's the reason what happened this one. When the company, you when you have a multiple location, if you want to communicate from one location to another location, secure communication has to be done. For this secure communication, we have a multiple different technologies we have. So one, we can use the frame relay, uh, sorry, uh, VPN we can use. Okay, so VPN. Uh, that's a secure communication. Yeah, IPsec yeah. communication, we can do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there are, we have multiple this one. So securely, if you want to build a tunnel or want to communicate, now the latest technology we have is DVAN. The latest technology we have yeah. is DVAN. Okay. To connect from one side to another side, we are using. Before to SDVAN, MPLS we were using. Okay. Before to MPLS, frame relay we were using. VPN we have still now also VPN we have. That is the difference. Frame relay. Before to frame relay, ATM we were using this one. Suppose you have an ATM uh, circuit or the frame relay circuit, this one. Over the ATM or over the frame relay, you want to send your voice traffic. Then you have to be create voice over frame relay or voice over ATM technology. Still in a Cisco router, if you log in, you get these two options. But at present, we are not using this technology. Okay, you go to any organization, we are not using this technology. And another, we have uh, MMOIP, multimedia mail over IP, this one. Okay, so these are the five different types of dial peers we have, but very famous dial peer is only two, ports and Y. The other three dial peer, we are not using nowadays. Okay, okay, we can use either ports dial peer or Y dial peer. Got it? Okay, even in the interview, they expect, suppose if they are asking any dial peer, you have to explain what is dial peer and everything, how many types of dial peer. So you have to explain about the spots and void dial peer. Okay, what is spots, what is void, where and when you can be used this spots and void dial peer. Other three dial peer are not required to be used because nowhere it's using that. Clear? What is the dial peer?
So this is how the commands, uh, dial peer, voice, tag number, and after that, it will be defined the port. This is the dial peer we have created to connect the analog phone we have connected on the router. Okay. So this is how the scenario. For an example, um, this is the router. I have an analog phone, analog phone which is connected on the router. This is the FXS interface, foreign exchange station. And for an example, the port number is one slash zero slash zero. Okay, now for this port, I have to assign one extension. That is what first I'm getting into the, this is how the command dial hyphen peer. This is for voice and this is the tag number. Okay. And there are many dial peers we can create. Every dial peer can be identified by the tag number. This is not a number, only tag number that one. Then what type of dial peer is this one? Ports dial peer. Why? Because any analog in, uh, in interface, if you want to be configured, it's a ports. Destination pattern, this is what actually the number. 77777. Seven, 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 seven. For this phone, we have assigned the extension 777. Seven, seven, seven. Now, where you are assigning, see, this is the dial peer. Under this one, you have the number and where you are assigning this dial peer. On the port number 1 slash 0 slash 0. So, 1 slash 0 slash 0 is the FXS. Under this port, any phone you connect, any analog phone, that phone will be getting this 777 extension. That's how you can be configured the dial peers. <clears throat> See, router we have, phone I have connected. Yeah. So I can be now create a dial peer, one with the PST and also one with the IP van also this one. See, VoIP dial peer if you want to create. Dial peer voice tag number. Here we have to give the VoIP. Destination pattern is same. Okay, but instead of the port number, see in the ports dial peer, we always give the port number. But in the VoIP dial pair, always we give session target IPv4. Okay. I am targeting to next stop. Next stop means who is my next router or next gateway or next uh, provider IP address that we are providing as a 10.18.0.1. Okay. Okay. Next one. Next one. I'm going to show you the practicals. Okay. Uh, first, uh, let me complete the theoretical part. After that, in one shot, we can do the practicals. Next, understanding the call legs. Okay. See, call legs are logical connection between any two telephone devices, such as gateway, router, CUCM, or telephone endpoint. Additionally, call legs are router-centric. When an inbound call arrives, it is processed separately until the destination is determined. Then a second outbound call leg is established. And the inbound call leg switch to the outbound voice port. Okay. Call leg represents simple definition. I'll give call leg represents to or from to the voice gateway. To or from to the voice gateway from any dial peer. From any dial peer means or any path. Any path means either the call can come from the PSTN or the call can come to the ITSB. Mm -hmm. Okay. Call leg represents to or from to the gateway, to or from to the gateway, from any path, from any path or from any dial peer. This one. Okay. For an example, see, this is my source. This is the analog phone where it is connected directly on the router. Then one router to another router, we have the packet network. Packet network means IP address we have. Okay, WAN connection. Then from this router to destination, another phone we have this one. Now I'm calling from this source to destination, totally four call legs we have. Totally how many call legs? Four. See, source call leg one. From the router, it's going outside, call leg two. Again, another router, it's receiving call leg three. From the router, it's going outside. So totally how many? Four, Four call legs here. Okay. To make a call from this source to destination, as per this topology, how many call legs? Four. Totally four call legs we have this one. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay. For an example, if I'm having a topology like this, 
Now you have to tell so how many colleagues. See, this is the my phone, analog phone, which is connected to the router. Okay. Then this is the LAN connection we have. Another router we have. Then from here, I have the PBX system, private branch exchange. Okay, PBX. Then from the PBX, now I have connected my phone, another analog phone. This is my 1001 extension and 2001 extension here. This one. Now you have to tell to make a call from 1001 to 2001, totally how many call lines we have? Four. Next. How many call lines? Next. Two. Four. Five. Four. 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 Are you sure? Four. <clears throat> okay. From the this four to this router is the call leg one, right? I'm going to write C1. <coughs> Next, from this router, it's going outside. Then it's a call leg two. This call leg one, what type of call leg this one? It's a ports. Because unlock four, which is connected router, unlock ports only. Then call leg two? It's a wipe. Because over the van, the call is going. Okay. Then the router is receiving. That is a call leg three. Then what type of uh, call leg is this? Again, wipe. Because through the IP address. Then from the router, it's going outside. Then it's a call leg four. four. Now what type of this one? Ports. Ports. Then <clears throat> huh? who said four? Then four. Four, four. No? How many? How many now? Four. Four. How many? Five. 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 Four. Four. Five. Five. It's only four colleagues. What is the definition? Two are from the voice gateway. From any path. We had to consider only routers. Right? We should not consider the PBX system. What is the definition? See here, call like one to the router. Call like two from the router. Call like three to the router. Call like four from the router. Now PBX we are not calculating. It's a router centric. Call like represents router centric. We had to calculate only on routers. Got it? What is that? Call like What is this here? What it is? Collex are router centric. Can you see this one here? So that is what? Collex. Okay. Is this clear? What is the Collex? Okay. Now I have a scenario like this. Uh, I'm going to write my topology first. Let's understand the topology. Then after we can discuss about the wild cards here. So this is my router one. It's my headquarter or anything you can take it. So to get to, to see here, I am having multiple phones. Example, this is my phone. You can take any phone, either it's an IP phone or analog phone, whatever the phone you have this one. Then I have another office. Here also we have some phones. Okay. Its extension is, for example, 2001, 2002. Here the extension is 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. We have this one. Now to connect from here to here, we have PSTL and also we have the ISP. 
through the internet we can communicate. Okay, this is my WAN connection. Then this is my PSTN connection I'm having. Okay, so let it be whatever the single cluster. Yeah, maybe a single cluster. Okay. Now I want to make a call from the 1001 to the 2002. Right? From this phone, if I dial the 2002, from this phone, the call comes to the gateway. In the gateway, now call has to be connect via ISP. Okay. Because both the end we have the van, right? No, oh, sorry. Both the end we have the unified infrastructure. When both the location you have the unified infrastructure, always the call has to go via internet. It's a free of cost. No issues <laughs> on that one. Well and good. We don't have any issues here in this one. Okay. That's fine. What happens if this connection goes down? Okay, in this scenario, what happened if the van goes down? Now, this time the call has to be wrought from PSTN, right? It has to be wrought via PSTN here. But this end user always will dial 2002 only. The end user doesn't know how the call is routing. So, end user will not care about all these technical things. Okay, what is this router? What is this gateway? PSTN, ITSP? I don't care about that one. So, whenever if I want to communicate to this user, which user? The 2002, always I dial 2002 only. Correct? Yes or no? 2002 only, I'm going to dial this one. Okay. Now, how the call has to be routed from the PSTN? Because if I'm dialing the 2002, if the ISP is there, easily the call will be routed via ISP. ISP can carry any digit, one digit, two digit, five, 10, 20, 25, 30 digit, any digit number it can be carry. But if the call is routing via PSTN, always it should be E.164 format. But my number 2002 is not in the E.164 format. Now, how the call is going to be routed? This is the one scenario. Got it? Bring the point. Okay. I'll come back on this one. Another scenario. Here in my destination, totally we have 50 numbers. 2001, 2002, 2003, like 2050. We have 50 numbers we have. To reach from this router to this one, either you route via ISP or PSTN, whatever it may be this one. Yes, if the call is routing via ISP, we have to create a wipe dial pair and here we have to create a pods dial pair we have to create. But to reach this one, we are creating a dial pair, right? Yes or no? Dial pair we are creating. How we are creating dial pair? This is how we are creating. For example, I'm going to write here, dial hyphen pair voice tag number. Okay. It can be anything. Take it wipe only. Okay. Then I'm giving destination pattern 2002. Then session session target ipv4 something ip address 10.10.10.2 10 10 10 see maybe the service provider ip address had given so this is how what happened it will be this dial pair i had to be created in the router then it can be read to the 2002 then to reach all the 50 numbers then how many dial pairs we have to create 50 dial pairs we have to create right yes or no is it possible to create 50 dial PS on the router? Possible time consuming error. It's possible. Creating 50 dial PS is possible. But what happens? It takes more administrative work, time, and it's a, and also what happens? No error. Whenever you create, configure anything on the router, it's going to consume some memory there. It's going to consume some space. So unnecessary, we are creating a more dial PS. In this scenario, what we are going to do here, when you have a scenario like this, 
Okay, you don't have single number. You will be having multiple numbers. You want to reach to all this multiple number. In that scenario, we are going to use wildcard patterns. We use what? Wildcard patterns here. With us. Okay, that is what we are going to be discussed now in the wildcard pattern. You got it now? Okay, so now we are going to use the wildcard. See, these are the different types of wildcard we have. This is the symbol. This is the description we have. First, we have a dot. Can you see this one? Okay, it's called period. It's called period. period. This indicates single number between 0 to 9. If you have one dot, one number, but any number between 0 to 9. If you have a dot means... It can be any number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But it's a single number. Okay. So in this scenario, coming to this one, suppose if I want to reach let me pen. Okay. If I want to reach from here to here, already we have created dial PS, right? Dial PR, voice, tag number, the destination pattern 2002. Now what I can do here in this one. Okay, I can give here two dot dot dot. Okay, if I give two dot dot, so it can be match two zero 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 two two nine 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 between two thousand to two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. It can match any number. Now, by creating a single dial pair, I can reach all the extensions, right? Instead of creating uh, individual dial pair for every user, 2001, 2002, 2003, very simple, I can go with two dot dot. With this one, so it we match. See, dot means it represents single number between 0 to 9. It can be any number. So, totally three dots I'm having, 0, 0, 0 to 999. Between this, it can match any number. That's how we can be achieved. Okay, we can be created dial PS in the production, reaching to multiple user by using single dial PS or two dial PS. This one. It can be anything that okay, two digit, four digit. But the call is routing. Now here you understand. I am routing this call over the ISP internet. In the internet. It's not required. The number should be into the E.164 format. It can be any digit. 1 to 30, 30 to any digit. It can be this one. Still, uh, one can be carry any digit here, this one. So how the call will be identified? Is that this call need to go under for this particular? So normally, we have to delete 2050. So now I am dialing for 203. In that case, what you can do, if you want to only, you want to limit the numbers. Okay, then you give two zero dot dot. But still there are four numbers, but still there are ten numbers. So how in the ten number is the, the call will go? Where the, the ten number? Number. What ten numbers? So for example, as you said, there are uh, two dot dot dot. Okay. So I'm I, I need to call two two zero the, the big mouth big number. Two zero? Two zero zero five. Okay. So how the call will get go to the particular number? So that is we'll discuss that one. That is the process of inbound and outbound LPR matches. There the call goes, receive, it will check it out. We'll see that. Thing. It comes in the next slide, I guess. Okay, next is the bracket. <laughs> Indicates a range of digit. Range of digit means, for example, here, 5 hyphen 7 comma 9. Okay, see here, first I'll go with this one. 5 hyphen 7 means it's a range between 5 to 7. If you give like this one, it matches totally three numbers. 5, 6, 7. Always it takes in a range, a group. Okay. Another example we have 5, 
comma eight. Sometimes you will not get comma here. But when you are configuring, we will not give the comma here. Phi eight means it's a phi eight because it indicates a range of digits. Okay, phi eight means it's a phi eight. Now here, phi seven nine we have this one. Can you see this one? Phi six seven and nine we have this one. Not eight here. This one. Okay. So in this, this type of, I don't know the technically what to say about this uh, two dial pier, open bracket, bracket, square, square bracket, and round, round bracket here, this one. Okay. Uh, this is the parenthesis, right? Okay, question. The parenthesis, that flower bracket, it's called parenthesis, right? Okay. So here what happened this one? Whenever you have C5279, it takes either this number or this number. It will not take full the number. But here, it takes full number. Example, triple five we have, right? It takes all the numbers. See, what is the difference between the square bracket and round bracket? In the square bracket, it takes single number. In the round bracket, it takes all the numbers. That is the difference here. See, in this case, either it takes five or six seven. or seven or nine. Any one number it matches. Here, phi 8 means it's not 58. Either it match 5 or 8. Yeah, this one. Got it. This is how it, it's going to match. But here, in the round bracket, it takes all the numbers. See, in the round bracket, 5, 5, 5, we have, right? It takes all the 5, 5, 5, 5. Okay. Then question mark, percentage, we have this one. So, indicate the preceding digit occurs 0 or 1 time. Uh, and here, uh, same. Uh, here occurred 0 or more time here, this one. So, example. I'm having a pattern like this. Two, four, question mark. This is the question mark. Five, seven, dot. Okay. Preceding digit means before to this question mark, what number you have? Four. four. That occur zero time or one time. That means the output. Okay. Suppose if you have created two, four, question mark, five, seven, dot, two, Five seven dot zero time two four four five seven dot one time two time yeah one time means I have to take uh, sorry here zero time means I have to take only one digit one time one extra means I have to take here but here coming zero or more times means Instead of question mark, if I am taking percentage here, okay, 2, 4, percentage 5, 7, this can be increased how many times you want that one? 2, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 5, 7, top. 2, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 5, 7. Like, whenever you have any dial digit, the number you have, the maximum size of that digit should be 32 numbers. Mm -hmm. Maximum size comes, right? Any dial digit maximum size, it's a 32 digit here, this one. Now, already we have two, five, seven, dot, we have four digit, we have this one. So, 32 minus four, 28. 28 force, you can add it in that one. That is the maximum dial length of that number. That's how you can be configured. This is how we have a different patterns. Cisco is offering wildcard. According to your requirement, what happened, you can be used it here, this one. Okay. So that's how we have plus also we have almost same digit occurred one or more times, zero or more times, zero or one time here. Then T we have this one. See, dot we have, it matches any number. T also matches any number. The difference between the dot and T, dot matches single number. T matches any number. You dial one also, two number also, three, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 32. It's going to match any number. Okay, indicates the interdigit timeout, the router pause, the collect additional dial digits. You dial uh, generally where we configure this type of pattern, for an example, international numbers. International, we have 11 digit, 12 digit, 13 digit. Right. Now we can create single dial pair to match all the international calls. T. It matches any number, right? So that's how what we can do this one. Use the different wildcard. But uh, very famous, we use dot and T. 
other also we can use but generally in the production what happened dot and t majorly we are going to be use this one now you got the concept why we use the wild cards because when you have you want to reach uh, multiple users or multiple numbers it's not possible to be create uh, multiple dynamic. yes it's a possible but ha what happened here it more it occupies memory. some uh, space memory and everything and it will, takes a uh, time consumption also that's the reason we are going to be configure the single or two dial peers so that it can be read to the all the users okay not only in this example suppose if the call is routing via pstn also so there also we provide create a same dial peer and same uh, wildcard we are going to be configure that one so that's how we are going to be configure the dial peers clear Okay, next understanding inbound and outbound dial pair matches. So this is the very important inbound and outbound dial pair matches. What happened? When the call is coming and hitting to the router from any source, any source means either the call is coming from the call manager, PSTN or ITSB. For an example, here you take the call is coming from the PSTN to router or ITSB to router or internally from the call manager to the router. Whenever if the router is receiving any call, okay. It has to process for that call. After processing, it has to be sent out. Okay. So for that, we require the dial peers. For incoming also, we require the dial peer. Outgoing. Outgoing also, we require the dial peer. Okay. That is what inbound dial peer, outbound dial peer. Getting the point. If the any call comes to the router, router has to be processed that call. To process that call, Okay, we have some criteria how it's going to be processed that one. For that process, we call it inbound and outbound. From any source, if the call is receiving to the router, that's called inbound dial pair. For example, call is coming from the call manager to the router. It's an inbound. From the router, it is going outside. It's outbound. It can be anywhere, not only PSTN. If the call is going to PSTN, the call is going to ITSP, it's outbound only. Now, if the call is coming from the PST, it's inbound. If the call is coming from the ITSP, it's inbound. From the call, uh, gateway, its call is going to call manager, it's outbound. Getting the point? Inbound and outbound happen from anywhere. Okay. So that is what we are going to be discuss about the inbound dial PS and outbound dial PS here. See, outbound dial PR matching is completed on a digit by digit basis. Therefore, the router or the gateway checks. Okay, first we'll be discussing about the outbound dial pair. So we have inbound dial pair and outbound dial pair. So first we'll discuss about the outbound dial pair, then we'll be discuss about the inbound dial pair. See, if the call is coming to the router, so he asked about one question here. Okay, for example, from this number 1001, I'm dialing the 2002. This is the two dot 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 we have configured. The call is coming on the router from the gateway, it's sending the ISP, the call is hitting on the router. When the call is hitting on the router, this is what inbound first. Mm -hmm. After that, it has to go outside, outbound. Now he asked, suppose if I am dialing 2002, how the router understand the call has to go only to the exact user. Okay, the call has to go to the 2002 only. It's based on this one. Outbound dial pair matching is completed on digit by digit basis. For example, you are dialing what? Two. First, it's coming two. Next digit is zero, zero. Next digit is two. So explicitly it's matching, right? Okay. Now who is having two zero zero two? Which port number? Okay, port number zero slash one slash zero. Then send the call to the zero slash one slash zero. It goes. Okay. Check for the dial pair matches after receiving each digit and then route the call whenever a full match is made. Outbound dial pair matches criteria. Okay, how outbound dial pair it matches based on some criteria here. 
closest or explicit match closest or explicit match here first criteria second lowest preference third random selection third is what random, random selection example so this is my router I'm getting a call from any source to this router. So I'm having a two phones here. <laughs> okay. So here what happened? Two, zero, zero, one, two, zero, zero, dot. This phone having the extension two, zero, zero, one, this phone having the extension two, zero, zero, dot. If I dial two, zero, zero, one, which phone is going to ring? <laughs> Even this one also is going to match, right? Zero to one. Zero to nine. Two zero zero one. Dot means it can be matched any number, right? Now which one is going to be ring? Two zero zero one. There will be two zero zero one because closest match. Whenever you are dialing, closest match is who? One. Even it is matching, but my closest match is what? Two zero zero one. That is what criteria here. Suppose both having the same number. Now who is going to match? If I am dialing two zero zero one, who is going to match now? Earlier it is having two zero zero one. Yes, <laughs> when I am dialing two zero zero one, it was matching. Here dot was there. It can be match any number, but closest match is this one. It was ringing. Now both the phone having the same extension. Two zero zero one, two zero zero one. Random. Second, it's going to be check it out. If it is getting tie, closest match is getting tie. It's tie right both the end. Right. It check for the lowest preference. Who is having the lowest preference? By default, whenever you are creating a dial pair, by default preference is zero. By default preference is zero. zero here, this one. Okay. Say I have not created any preference. By default, both the preference is what? Zero, zero. Zero, zero here, this one. Then in this case, it goes to the random. Okay. Random selection it goes. Okay. Suppose if I have configured this as preference one, manually I have configured this phone as a preference one, and this I have left the default zero here. Now, if I dial 2001, who is going to ring? This is going to be right. Lowest is the best. Lowest is the best here always. Zero, one, two, three, four. This is how we can be configured this one. So this is how the outbound LPR matches here. This one. Got it? If the any call comes to the router, okay. Now clear this one. Closest match, lowest preference, yes, random yes. selection here. Yeah. So this is the very simple example I have given. But now Sir, coming, now coming to here in this one, now the call can be wrote via ISP. The call can be wrote via PSTN, right? Now how the call can be wrote via ISP? So we have created dial pair. Which dial pair we have created? Why? Now how the call will be wrote via PSTN when the ISP is down? We have to create another dial pair, right? Anything, if we want to route, we have to create what? Another dial pair. So let me create a dial pair here, this one. Okay. Dial hyphen peers, tag number two, it's a pods. Next, destination hyphen pattern, two dot dot dot. Two dot dot okay next port number because always on the ports we get port number right suppose it's port number is zero slash one slash zero so i'll give zero slash one slash zero then we have to give no digit strip example no digit strip then no shutdown of course no shutdown we have to give here also this one right this is how i have to create a dial here so now what happened here, in this scenario, also I had to be configured preference. 
Reference one. This is very important here. I am going to see when I dial two zero zero two. There are two dial pairs are matching. Dial pair one also matching. Dial pair two also matching. Now which one it has to take? Always I have to go with the lowest one. This one. This one it has to be go here. Lowest one here. Okay. Because it is having the zero preference here, right? By default. It is having zero here, this one. So if this one is not available, then only it has to be go via one. one. So this is the preference we have to be configured here. Always whenever, see, single number, two dot dot, here also matching, here also it's matching. With this one, always the call has to go via yeah. van. If the van is down, then the call has to go via PSTN. But the PSTN dial peer is a preference one. The wipe dial peer is a preference zero. That means who is having the lowest preference? Wipe. Always it goes with the wipe. If the van is down, then only the call goes to the PSTN. In this scenario, we have to configure the preference. See, from the router, see, from the router, it's going outside only, right? When it is going outside, it's what? Outbound. Got it? So, closest match. Lowest preference and random selection. That's how it will be outbound LPR matches. And it's very simple. Clear? Any doubts? Any questions? Sir, what yes. Sir, it will be in part, sir. Port interface 0 slash 1 slash 0. One interface we have done. Hmm. Then uh, numbers, so many numbers are there. How, how would you assign to that, that, family, that many numbers? But only one call it carries, right? Only one. Oh. Suppose if you have a digital interface, see if it is a FXO interface, if it is a FXO, FXO will carry only single number, right? Single number. Okay. If you are having a T1 E1 channel, channel, the who is the D channel? Zero slash zero slash zero colon fifteen is the D channel, right? Okay. This is how it comes. Zero slash zero slash example. So the port you will be giving this one. So that means how many channels you have already here? You have already defined 10, 20, how many? Then that many calls goes. Got it? But it's not possible for that FXO. FXO, FXO is only one call, right? Analog is what? One connection, one call. How it's possible to make it multiple calls in single connection? For even T1 only, we can do this. Yes. Got it? Clear? This is how the outbound LPR matches here, this one. So closest match, explicit match, lowest preference, and random, random selection. This is, again, outbound LPR examples we have. See, suppose if I'm dialing five, one digit. Any number can be matched. It goes with the closest preference. Some example just we have so, given. Uh, suppose we have to give multiple extensions. Multiple extensions. Give uh, multiple like, extensions uh, for series, what? Like 2000 series, 3000 series. Like you can create. Okay. Two dial pair you create. Two separate matches. Yep, yes. 2000 right. is one dial pair. 3000 is one dial pair. You want to reach uh, OIA, PST and also WAN also. Then total four dial pairs we have to create. Two dial pairs over the WAN. Right. Two dial pairs over the PST. Okay. Sir, so how to create a dial pair for, for the public number in the DID? Public number. Yes, so then the you give the, the instead of uh, two dot dot, give the DID range there. Mm -hmm. DID range. <clears throat> Next is the inbound dial pair matches. It's very simple. Don't be confused here, this one. Okay. Now what happened from the router, if it is going outside, it's outbound. Now, if the router receives the calls, no. that's inbound from any source, right? Um, Either it's receiving from the call manager, PSTN, ITSP, from anywhere, this one. Once the router receives the call, it has to process that call. To process, again, it has a criteria. How it's going to be processed that call. When determining how inbound LPS are matched on a router, it is important to note 
whether the inbound call leg is matched to a POTS or VoIP dial pair. Matching occurs in the following manner. Okay. So inbound pipe dial pair associated with the incoming POTS legs of the originating router of the gateway or inbound VoIP dial pairs are associated with the incoming VoIP call legs of the terminating router or gateway. It's telling that one, if the call is coming from the PSTN, it's a incoming pod style pair. If the call is coming from the ITSP, incoming wipe dial pair. See, for inbound, outbound also we have pods and wipe. Inbound also we have the pods and wipe. Suppose if the call is coming from the PSTN, it's an inbound pod style pair. If the call is coming from the ITSP, it's an inbound wipe dial pair. Okay, so that's we have. These are the criteria we have. First, we have incoming call number, answer address, destination pattern, port number, and the final we have the dial pier zero here. This one incoming call number means this is the first criteria it matches DNIS. First criteria is what DNA. See, this is incoming call number, answer address. Is the, these are the commands actually here. This one okay, but it's technically we call DNIS, ANI. And uh, destination pattern based on the ANI port number del PR0. We have this one. Let's see if I'm having okay. This is for the del PR0. I'm having okay. Let me explain you here. Understand carefully. Don't be confused. Anything here in this one. For an example, I'm having a CUC. The gateway I'm having, the gateway is connected to PSTN. The gateway is connected to ITSP. Suppose I'm getting a call from, okay, this is the one topology. I'm, I'm going to take another topology for simplest, uh, understanding. I have two rotors. <clears throat> I have the van connection. I have the phones here. Example 2001, 2002 and I have the phones here. 1001, 1002. It's a 10.1, it's a 10.2 IP address. Example. So, from here, I'm dialing 1001 to 2002. So now, router receives this call. When the router receives, it's what? Inbound dial pair matches here, right? So how we had to be created dial pair for this one? We had to create a dial pair, okay? For incoming also. Outgoing, we have a dial pair. Incoming also, we have to create a dial pair here, this one. This is how I'm creating. Dial hyphen pair space, voice, tag number, any number you can give. For an example, my tag number is 10. And it's Y. Why it's a Y? Because the call is coming over the van. If the call is coming from the PSTN, then it's a POTS. Okay. Then here I have to configure incoming dialed number hyphen number. First criteria it matches DNIS. Second criteria it matches ANI. DNI stands for Dialed Number Identification Service. DNI stands for Dialed Number Identification Service. Okay, this is based on the call number. This is based on the call number. You know what is calling and call? Suppose uh, I'm dialing from 1001 to 2001. Who is calling and who is called here? Source is the calling number. Destination is the call number. You have to remember. Always source is the calling number. Destination is the called number here, this one. Now, DNIS is based on what? Called number. Means we have to configure this dial pair based on the call number. See, just I have created dial pair voice tag number Y incoming dial number. Here I have to give 2001. 2001 is what? I'm dialing the call number. Who is call number here? 
2001. If you give like this one, that's enough. Okay, first criteria it matches, DNAs. Okay, by default, there is no configuration on the DNAs. By default on the router, you don't have any configuration. You have to configure manually this DNIS. DNI stands for dial number identification okay. service. This is based on the call number. Okay, whenever if the router receives the call, in that one, who is the call number it checks? Based on the call number, it will have to configure. Suppose I have configured incoming dial number 2001. One. Now, if the call is coming to 2002, Another inbound LPR we have to create. But again, creating multiple LPR, 100 numbers I'm having. Creating 100 inbound LPS, again, it consumes more space here. Now, what we can do here are two dot dot dot. Right? Now, what happened? Any number comes with this pattern 2002XXX, it's going to be match here, this one. Or only one single dot also you can give. No, it matches any number. Any digit, any number, single dot also if you give. For an example, internally we have some other force. 3001, 3002. 2xx also we have, 3xx also we have. One, what you can do, one, two inbound LPR you can create, one for the 3xx, one for 2xx. Or instead of, you can create single number, single LPR with a single lot, it's going to match for any other number. But how it will get rectified? This is only for, it's not for the outbound, this is for the incoming only to process. This is outbound is different, right? Why it's rectifying? Rectifying, it's happening in the outbound, right? This is for what? Whenever if I receive the something traffic when I'm receiving, I have to process. To process that one, what happened? I have some criteria that one. Only to process that one, I'm taking this inbound LPR. Based on the inbound LPR, I'm not deciding where the other user is connected. That is decided by the outbound LPR. So one more thing, that means zero to nine. Only one digit. So one yes, dot means zero to nine. It will be match one digit. But here, even if it is matching single digit also, it's going to process. It's not mandatory that it has to be matched completely full digit for incoming call. Incoming. Only for incoming right. call. Not for the outgoing call. Outgoing call, it has to match all the numbers. Getting the point? For the incoming call, right. even if it matches single number also, it process. Okay. Its number is matching. Okay, done. Go to the next. Got it? So... Suppose you have not configured DNA because DNS has to be configured yeah. manually, that I'll be here. If the, there is no DNIS, I will check ANI. This ANI is based on the calling number. ANI is based on the calling number. So, for example, same dial pair. Dial pair voice 10 void. So, instead of this command, if you are typing answer address 1001 because it's based on the calling number right who is calling number here 1001 now again if i'm calling from 1002 another dial pair has to be created so what i'm going to do here this one one dot 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 or dot from any source if the call is coming i'm going to match this one from any source the call is coming, I'm going to match here. This one. So this is what ANI has to be configured. Now, this by default, there is no configuration on the router for both DNIS and ANI. You had to configure manually. You had to configure manually at this one. Okay. <clears throat> you have to configure manually at this one. Suppose, yes, it will be configured that way. In the production, it's a mandatory, you have to configure inbound LPS. Okay. If the DNIS is configured, if the DNIS is matching, then it will not check for the ANI. Total five criteria is there. First, it will be checked for the DNIS. DNIS is matching, that's it, inbound is over. Then it goes to the outbound. If there is no DNIS or if the DNIS is not matching, then it's going to be checked out for the ANI. 
clear any doubts any questions or oh, inbound dialogue it's very simple no configuration just we have to create a dialogue period to match that numbers okay next if there is no dnis ani then it goes to the destination pattern based on the ani example suppose from this router if you want to reach this 1001 1002 how you can reach when destination pattern because here in this router 2 10.2 you have to create one outbound lpr how you will be creating outbound lpr i am going to write here dial hyphen peer voice tag number it's a wipe dial peer i'm giving only shortcut here okay then destination pattern one dot dot next session target ipv4 10 dot one this one 10 dot one this i've already created an outbound dial peer to reach right now it's going to match this dial peer Okay, if there is no DNIS or ANI, okay, if you are not configured, suppose from which source you are dialing, calling number, for that source, if you have created an outbound dial PR in your router, if you have created an outbound dial PR, then it's going to match this dial PR and it completes inbound dial PR. That is what the destination pattern based on the ANI. ANI means calling. If for that calling number, if you have created any destination pattern, outbound LPR, it's going to match that. Got it? That is what the third option we have the port number. Port number based on the ANI. Based on the ANI means for the ANI from the which source the call is coming. For that, if you have created an outbound LPR, then it's going to match that one. Suppose you have not created this dial PR. You have not created outbound dial PR. First, it checks the DNIS, no configuration, yeah. ANI, no configuration, port number based on the ANI, you have not created. Then, in this case, actually, fourth criteria we have the port number. This port number comes only for the port dial PR. It will check from the which port number I am receiving the call. Suppose if this is a router, Call is getting from the PSTN, PSTN from the port number 0 slash 1 slash 0, then it matches. Okay, I'm getting a call from this port number over. But for the void, we don't have the port number, right? This port number we get only for the ports. But we don't have the void. So finally, we have the dial pair. I'm going to write here. Finally, we have dial peer 0. By default in a router voice gateway, we get one dial peer, it's called 0. It's not possible to see the dial peer. Modification, deletion, nothing can be done for that. Dial peer 0, we cannot create, modify, delete, nothing. Automatically, it will be matches dial peer 0. It must. Somehow, it has to be process that call. So one or the other criteria has to be matched. Always the first criteria is DNIS. Yeah. If the DNIS is not there, then it goes to the ANI. And this DNIS, ANI has to be configured manually. By default, you will not get. Suppose from which source you are getting a call for that, if you have created an outbound LPR, then it matches the port number. Okay. That's a destination pattern. It's not port number, destination pattern. Fourth one is the port number. This is only for the ports. Okay. For the wipe, it will not consider this fourth option. Directly it goes to the dial peer. See. This is how it's going to be match the numbers. This is only for the matching. Now you don't think that one. So this one. First one is incoming call number, DNIS. If it is not matching, answer address. If it is not mentioning destination pattern based on the ANI, port number. If the port, all this are not matching, then finally it takes the dial peer zero. Okay. Automatic number identification. 
So road between the Kalam Nadi and Rotor is between the Kalman Nadi. Between the call manager, I'll come back. I'll come back. Okay. Say uh, default dial pair we have. When a matching inbound dial pair is not found, matching inbound dial pair, DNS is not there, ANI is not there, destination pattern is not there, port number is not there because the void is not there. Then I'll be match what? Dial pair zero. The router resorts to virtual dial pair called the default dial pair. The default dial pair is often referred to as a dial pair zero. So by default, there will be one dial pair zero, that one. And that's not possible to create, delete, modify. Dial pair zero for inbound VoIP peers has the following characteristic. This is we are for configuring for VoIP dial pair. Okay. It matches any codec. The dial pair zero we have, right? It matches any codec. IP precedence, it will be having zero. Okay. VAD is enabled on that one. No RSVP support, okay. Res uh, resource reservation protocol that one. So these are the features actually. Okay, it will not support here in this one. Fax rate will be support here. It matches any codec, VAD is enabled, fax it support, but it will not support for the RSVP. This one. This is about the dial pair zero. That one. So this is the least matches it happens, but it's a recommend always you have to configure the dial pair. Okay, so always it's a mandatory. We had to be created LPS, inbound LPS in the production network. Maybe in the lab scenario, we not required because it's very simple lab we have. Easily we can be route the call. But in the production, what happened this one? It's a mandatory you have to create a LPS this one. Inbound also you have to create. Obviously outbound, if you are not creating outbound, call will not route. Okay, so inbound LPS also has to be created. So I will show you in the real scenario how the dial pair has created in which scenario uh, why it will be helpful actually what happened when it will be helpful this inbound dial pair suppose multiple locations calls are coming on the single router single gateway the calls are coming in that one we should be know which country which provider's call is coming in that case to match that one inbound dial pair has to be created. Centralized in the centralized uh, uh, trunk connection. We'll see that one. I'll show you that one later about uh, uh, in the real time how the dial PS will be. Here also we created same thing, but there also we created it. Same thing, but only there we give instead of two dot dot something, they we give explicit numbers. DAD numbers we give that one. That is the only the thing here. So this is about the inbound dial pair matches and outbound dial pair. For uh, inbound ports, dial pair zero is configured with the no IVR application command. Yeah. Next is command to verify before to that one. So he was having one question actually he was asking because now I'll come to the real time uh, actual scenario here. See we have the COCM. Then the IP phones are registered here under this call manager cluster. Then we have voice gateway. From the voice gateway, we have PSTN. From the voice gateway, we have ITSP. Okay. See here, first, here I have to create inbound port style pair. Here I have to create inbound wipe dial pair. If the call is coming from the PSTN port. to router, inbound ports. If the call is coming from the ITSP to router, inbound wipe. Now, if the call is coming from the call manager to router, inbound wipe dial pair I have to create. So, as per this topology, how many inbound dial pairs I have to create? Three dial pairs you have to create. This dial pair not only from PSTN or ITSP, even from the call manager. From the call manager, if I'm sending router, it's receiving, right? So here also we have to create a inbound dial pair matches. That's what dial pairs, inbound and outbound ways from any source, if the call is receiving to the router, okay, it has to be processed. If the, from the call manager, if I'm receiving the call, I have to process, right? For that, some criteria we have to process that. That's called inbound. Inbound. So 
two void we have, one pots we have. Why? Right? Because between the call manager to the gateway, we use the IP address. Then it's a void IP. Between the gateway to ITSP, again we use the IP address, it's a void. But between the gateway to PST, we have what? Pots. So we have to create pots. This is our inbound IP address. Got it. Outbound means one for the pots, okay. one for the ITSP, one for the call manager. Okay. See, minimum three inbound LPS you have to create. Outbound LPS, it's depend. Now we cannot say only three. We can be create multiple here, this one. Why? Because? Like for ISP also. No, we have different types of number, right? Maybe for national calls. Mm -hmm. One separate LPS I'll create. International calls. One separate LP or LP create. Then any toll free numbers. You want to dial any toll free number, separate LP or LP create. Or any other numbers you have. So, depend on the country, what happened, we have to create multiple LPS. Outbound. Outbound. Outbound, yes. For national, we create separate. International, we create separate. And again, if that national number someone is calling, if international number someone is calling back, then inbound LPS. Inbound is only one, right? That's through ITSP or PST. Oh. From the PSTN or the VoIP, it's only one. Incoming is the only one from any number you type. Okay. Outbound or many, depend. Okay. Maybe sometimes I have to dial a separate dial PR for emergency number also. It's not mandatory. Emergency. For example, emergency number 108 you want to dial. Right. Or 101, 102 you want to dial this one. For emergency, separate outbound LPR. For national call, separate. Outbound. For international, separate outbound LPR. For toll-free number, separate outbound LPR. So that's a depend here. We cannot say that how many outbound LPS we have. You can be create two, three, four, five, six also that. So for international, for every country, we need to uh, configure a separate LPR or one? Yeah. It's up to you that one. You want to come. Change, change. Generally, it's not possible. There are hundreds of countries out there. It's not possible. We create only one number. That is what the pattern T we use. Okay. For national? National yeah. depend. Uh, we have some patterns that one. It's not like uh, we we don't have exactly only this wildcard you use. It will be matches. Depend on the country that one. Depend on the country. So later I'll show you. I'll take it any one country's example in the real time. I'll show you that uh, how we have created LPR for different different purpose. Clear? Any doubts? Any questions? Okay. So now this is how we have to be. Is this clear? Your doubt? Okay, you were asking from the call manager to the gateway, right? So, yes, we had to create an inbound LPR there also. So, this is how the inbound LPR matches happen here. This one. Something commands to verify, show yes, call active yes, voice. Mandatory three outbound. Yes. Mandatory Not three outbound, three in, inbound. inbound. And outbound are like router for It's That is what, what till now have discussed that one. It depends on the country that one. Emergency, you can create one. National, you can create one. International, you can create one. Toll free, you can be create one. Depend how many. But according to topology, one is PSTN and one is white. Two different versions. Yes, man. For an example, not two only. In the PSTN, emergency call also goes to the PSTN. National call also goes to the PSTN. International also goes to the PSTN. Then toll free also goes via PSTN. So over the PS10, how many LPR we have to create? Four. Four yeah. If you want, you can uh, put in. It's not an optional. Suppose your requirement is there from the internal, you want to dial all this type of number, then you have to create, right? It's not an optional. Quite if you want to dial, suppose Four. someone is someone wants to be dialed to the toll-free number, then Four. someone wants to dial to the emergency number from your office, then? Yes. That's not an optional. Like inbound or mandatory, we have three. Like, three only inbound. Like, uh, for outbound, uh, minimum, we have to There is no minimum, nothing like that one, according to requirement. That one. Minimum, if you say like that one, see, it, it's actually wrong statement. Minimum two. One for national, one for international. One for domestic call. 
within the country. One for international, you have to create. Okay. From router to switch Outbound. We need to switch. Yes. Three. What three? According to that topology, minimum three. See, that's not according to that topology, that one. According to that topology, minimum three inbound. Outbound, we cannot say minimum three, that one. For an example, in the call manager, I have uh, two different DAD extensions. 2001, 2002, then 3001, 3002, then four. what? 4. 2 Delphi are to create. 2 dot dot, 3 dot dot are to create. That is what? So I have not defined there, right? It's not like minimum or depend on how your patterns are there, which country, how many numbers you want to have, you have to create. It will be not like minimum. Okay. In that case, only, only oh, okay, you can take it three that one. It required, uh, you can go for multiple. See, inbound, it's only one Del pair we create from one source. For outbound, you cannot say that one, only one or two that one. Every country different. And depend on your office, what type of number user is going to dial. Based on that, that many outbound Del pairs you have to create. Okay. If they want to dial toll free, you have to create separate. You, they want to dial uh, emergency, you have to create. If they want to dial national, international, they some countries what happen national they have different patterns. National itself they have different patterns, different pattern outbound LP you have to create that one. So always you have to you know depend on the provider, depend on the country. Pure call active voice brief. The command, if there is any active call, on so means your dialing call is connected. So it will be displayed. Show voice call status. Show voice DSP active. Means DSP chips we have, right? So you want to be checking out the DSP status. Which DSP is active, st that status. Or error, okay? Show voice uh, DSP group all. Uh, this is related to DSPs. Show voice DSP. Show voice call summary. All show call active voice again we have here. Show call history voice. History. The already uh, call got disconnected. I want to see the history. Today morning how many calls are routed based on this gateway. The history also we can look into that one. Okay. So these are the commands. Uh, show voice port. You know that number. The either it, This is for the analog or digital tag number. Digital so, also comes so right. Voice, DSP? DSP, that's for DSP chips to verify that one. DSP chip, PVDM DSP <laughs> to verify that okay. one. So to know about more about, watch my last video <laughs> about the DSPs. Okay. So these are the different commands we can be used okay. to be verified all your calls. Okay. Now, whatever we have done, the theoretically, the same thing we are going to do the practical part. Okay. Now you have understood dial pair means what, call legs means what, wildcard means what, inbound dial pair means what, outbound dial pair means what. Everything you have understood. So what we can do, we can do the lab. Okay. In the we in the router we can create a lab scenario we can implement all these things on that one okay so for this we'll be doing it in the next class so before we wind up you have any doubts any class the next class is the digit manipulation but before we get into this digit manipulation we are going to be do the lab first for this one after that we are going to discuss about the digit manipulations any doubts any questions before we wind up